It's Mexican Fiesta time! Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen and today it's going to be a Mexican Fiesta because we're celebrating my good friend's Juliana's birthday party. So, we're going to start by making a Tres Leches birthday cake. Then we're going to be making our chicken quesadillas and then our salsa and dip uh, guacamole sauce, which is going to be amazing. So I cannot wait for you to guys to come over and let's get this party started. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh. My friends call me Josh Havuni, also known as the hostess with the mostess, who is a big foodie and loves to entertain his friends with fun dinner parties, game nights, and even movie nights. And can I say, they're so much fun? I'm always cooking up a storm in my kitchen, whether it's delicious desserts or amazing bomb-ass fried chicken. It's always a party at my house. <laughs> so come on in as I show you how to make delicious, amazing food that will bring everyone to the table. So, what are you waiting for? Come on over and let's get this party started with Cooking with Friends. <laughs> bon appetit! Welcome to Cooking with Friends. Let's start with the tres leches. Okay, so, so to start with the tres leches cake, we're going to need three eggs. We're going to crack open three eggs right into a measuring bowl because it's easier that way and better for us to have control on how to put in the eggs. The reason why is because in case you have a little shelf, you don't want to have the little um, egg shell inside the cake, right? So no to that. <laughs> So we're going to add three room temperature eggs into the mixing bowl and then we're also going to get one cup of um, sugar right in there as well. So we're going to grab one cup of sugar and then we're going to place it right inside the sugar and the egg. So like I said, we're going to add the three eggs into the mixing bowl. And then we're going to add the sugar. So here's the trick. Once you put it into the mixing bowl, you turn it on and you let it mix for a good 10 minutes. And do not touch it for 10 minutes, okay? In the meantime, while the cake is actually, the batter is making it a mixer, we're going to get our flour. We're going to grab one cup and a half of all of this flour. And put it on a sifter. Add one and a half cups of all peppers flowers into the sifter, followed by two teaspoons of baking powder and a third of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then sift it together. Now that the batter is done, look how delicious and amazing and creamy this looks. And that's how you want it to be. You want it to have this consistency when it comes to the eggs and sugar. Okay, it's been 10 minutes now and the batter is done. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients to mix the whole entire cake batter. Now, very slowly, we're going to add the dry ingredients into the mixing pan. Make sure to apply the flour little by little. Add two teaspoons of good vanilla extract. And then with the spatula, make sure to scrape the sides of it so that every little cranny and flour gets well incorporated into the batter. Oh guys, this is my favorite dessert to make. I love to make my tres leches. If I can eat this every day, I can. And it's dangerous because once you get the, tank, the hang of making tres leches, oh, it's so dangerous. <laughs> okay, remember, you wanna get all of the nice batter from the paddle into the dish as well. So. It's very dangerous when you know how to make tres leches on your own because I love tres leches. And when I learned to make this and I saw how simple it was, I was like, oh, I can make this every single week. 
And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, but <laughs> it's a very dangerous dessert to learn how to make because oh, if you have a sweet tooth like me, oh, you're in trouble. You are in danger, girl. <laughs> oh my God, this tastes delicious. I cannot wait for you guys to try this at home, make it for your family and friends, have a little Mexican fiesta, you know, Cinco de Mayo is coming up. So you could definitely try making this tres leches. It's so yummy and it's so delicious. All right, so the next step is we're going to get the baking dish and we're going to pour into the batter inside the baking dish and bake it for 30 minutes in the oven. All right, so now on the baking dish with the spatula, you're gonna scrape all of the batter out and then we're going to apply it right in there. Right in there, it looks so pretty. all the nooks and crannies from the dish. Oh, guys, I love the dessert so much. It tastes so good and I cannot wait for you guys to try it. Into the oven it goes for 25 minutes and a 350 degrees oven. By the time it's all done, we're gonna have tres leches. All right, so the 25 minutes it's done and oh my God, the house smells so good with this cake. I love it. Okay, so as you can see, the tres leches cake is done baking in the oven. Now we're gonna let it set for 30 minutes and while it's setting in 30 minutes, we're gonna poke it with a toothpick and create little holes so that we could actually pour in the mixture of the three milks that I'm gonna show you how to make it next. All right, it's time for the tres leches syrup. All right, so to make, oh, I was just sniffing the vanilla bean. It's like a little mustache, see? A little mustache. <laughs> All right, so for the next step to make the delicious Tres Leches syrup, um, it's going to need one little stem of the vanilla bean. And did you know, fun fact, the vanilla is actually an orchid. It comes from an orchid. So we're going to grab the knife, we're going to cut it in the in between to split it open and then scrape off the seeds to get the um, vanilla bean extract from it. All right, so this is the vanilla bean right over here. And you're going to grab the knife and then very, very gently, you're going to cut right in between, just like this. And you're going to scrape off from the back of the, of the knife, scrape, the vanilla seeds and that right there you see it right there that's the vanilla bean extract you see it closer there you go now with the toothpick you're going to poke little holes all around the cake now that we have the holes inside of the cake the next step is to pour in the milks because these little holes that we're creating are going to be the little outlets where the milk is going to go right inside. Okay? The next step is I'm going to show you how to mix the milks. Alright, so the next step is going to be mixing the milks together, the three milks. So one of the three milks is going to be a quarter cup of heavy cream right into a four cup measuring cup. So one, one and a quarter cups of heavy cream goes right in there. And then you're going to add one full can of condensed milk, of evaporated milk, sorry. And you're going to add one cup, one can of sweetened condensed milk. This is the yummy part. This is the sweet one. This is the one that you can actually devour yourself into the whole entire time. So, oh my god, this is the most delicious dessert you could ever make for your family and friends. Like, this is my infamous Gutierrez Leches. Like, even my, my friends at work, my guy friends, are like, this is the best one I've ever had in my whole entire life. I'm like, oh, thanks guys. <laughs> so, yeah, this is really really great so you want to get all of the little almost you know every little inch 
of this condensed milk right into the mixer. And then, last but not least, um, we're going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract right inside as well. So a little bit goes a very long way of the vanilla extract. And then, remember that vanilla bean um, seeds that we got? We're going to add that in there as well. So add the vanilla beans inside. And then we're going to mix it. So now I'm going to mix and whisk and it's going to be the most delicious concoctions you could ever create to have the tres leches. So now if you pour the milk right inside the tres leches cake and you're going to see how amazing this is going to taste when you are done. So yummy, so ugh, look at that, look at this. All right, next we're gonna wrap it with wrapping paper so that it can absorb all of the milk. And we're gonna refrigerate it for the next three to four hours. The party snack till six, so we have plenty of time today for a good rest. And then before it finishes, before the end of when the party starts, we'll make the whipped cream and put on the Mishkino, um sherries on top. So it'll be a delicious dessert. All right, it's time for Pinto de Gallo. All right, so now it's time for my favorite salsa time. It is not about dancing salsa, it is the salsa you can eat. So it's gonna be the most simplest little um, sauce you could ever make because all you need is a food processor and it makes your life is super easy and it's gonna be super fast. So all you're going to need for the pinto de cayo is gonna be one onion, one tomato, and then cilantro, which will be here. So let's get this party started. All right, I love using my food processor when it comes to salsas because especially when you're cutting onions. So I'm like, raise your hands whoever cries whenever you cut an onion because I know I do because I cry when I cut onions all the time because they're either so strong and potent. But the cool thing about using the food processor is that you're not going to be needing to cry anymore because all you have to do is literally cut the onion in half, cut it in fours, and then place it in the food processor. All right, just put it in the food processor just like that. And then you're gonna chop it up, place the food processor, and then pulse it. Just like that. All you have to do next is put it in a bowl. Put a spatula, place it on a bowl. And then the next step is going to be the tomatoes. Same thing with the tomatoes. You don't even have to clean the food processor because it's all gonna be one same dish. So all you're gonna have to do is just cut the outsides of each end of the tomatoes, place it in your trash bowl, and then you're going to cut the tomatoes in halves, just like this, so it falls into fours. Place it into your food processor. Close it again and pulse. And just like that, bring back your bowl. Let's take off the, the blade. Next, you're going to pour it into the same bowl with the onions and just like that you have your pizza de gallo and then mix it up a bit just like this look how delicious this looks guys 
Look at your salsa, your pink chili cayo salsa. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of the cilantro. So you're gonna grab a nice little handful. And you're going to chop it. You want at least about like two tablespoons worth of cilantro. You want it finely chopped. You could have done it in the food processor too. But it's also fun chopping it. So you're gonna add it in there with your sauce. Look at that guys. Look how yummy this is going to look. It's gonna taste delicious. Let's add a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper. Now we're going to add a whole half of a lime. So cut the lime. And then half a lime, half the lime goes in there to give it a little bit of the juice. <laughs> now it's up to you. If you want it spicy, you can add a little bit of jalapeno in there as well, or a little dashes of hot sauce. In my case, I like spicy, but not too much. But I know that my friends are coming over for the for the fiesta. It's not a big fan of spicy food, so it's a very mild. So we're almost done. <laughs> okay, the moment of truth, the chip test. If it holds, it's amazing. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Check this out. Oh my god. Okay, right, now to try it. Mmm. 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 -mm. Perfect. Mmm. They're so yummy. Mmm. You taste the onions, the tomatoes, salt, pepper, a little bit of lime, the cilantro, and it's delicious. Divine. It's ready for the party. <laughs> Alrighty, it's time for chicken quesadillas. Okay, it's now time to make the chicken quesadillas. It's gonna be the most amazing chicken quesadilla you can ever try. So we're first we're going to prep the chicken. So we're gonna have four chicken breasts because I'm gonna have five people to six people coming over to my place today. So we're gonna place them in a wooden cutting board and we're going to dry them off. Always dry them before you prep them. So you're going to go both sides with a napkin and you're going to dry these little breasts up. So these are boneless chicken breasts that I got from the butcher. And these are gonna be amazing. So normally, if you are in a hurry, right? Sometimes I'm in a hurry too and I don't wanna cook that much. You can also get rotisserie chicken from the market and you can just cut them in little slices and then put them in your tortilla and have a delicious chicken quesadilla. But in my case, I wanna do it from scratch. So that's where we're doing it from scratch. So now that we have our four chicken breasts, the next step we're gonna do is season it with salt and pepper. So we're going to wash our hands, because it's a must. <laughs> okay, so now that I have dry of my hands, because it's every single time you cook a chicken or any poultry um, dish, you always want to wash your hands, okay? Next, we're going to add the seasoning. So it's going to be a little bit of salt on both sides. And I'm using kosher salt. So we're going to add some salt. And then we're going to add pepper. And a secret ingredient, <laughs> a little secret ingredient that I put for my chicken tikka um, quesadillas is going to be, I'm going to put it on both sides, okay? So you're going to season both sides of the chicken and you're going to put salt again and you're going to be doing your pepper and I have the skillet warming up to a medium high heat. You don't want it to get too dark. All right, a little pepper. Yummy. And then to my secret ingredient, I like to use chicken taco seasoning. That's all you need. Oh my god, this is gonna make the chicken quesadilla taste like if you went to a restaurant. And in this case, you came to my restaurant. So all you have to do is just sprinkle a little bit of the chicken taco seasoning right on top. 
just like that on both sides and then mm, it smells good you smell the whole seasoning do it next to the other side and then you're gonna put it in the skillet and cook for eight minutes each side once it's cooked eight minutes each side you're going to turn off the heat and you're gonna let it set for 10 minutes and what that's gonna do it's going to make the chicken super juicy and tender it's gonna be well cooked it's gonna be nice and golden brown and then you're gonna chop it up and put it into tortillas so see you in a bit <laughs> cook for eight minutes on each side when it's done cover with the lid and let it rest for 10 minutes all right so it's almost time for the party and now is a good time to start setting up the three stitches. So the easiest way to do it, you can whip your cream or you can use whipped cream, which is already whipped for you. And it's a little shortcut to make this delicious dessert possible. All right, so for first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna add the whipped cream right on top of the three stitches. And like I said, it's a little shortcut because I was running out of time, so I ended up by the whipped cream. Normally I'll do the whipped cream by myself, but whipped cream doesn't hurt nobody, right? It's actually the most yummiest little whipped cream. It'll be kind of the same as, as you were going to do it by yourself anyway. So a little bit of gold whip around right top of the cake, which is going to come out so yummy. I cannot wait for the party to start. And technically you could use the whole tub if you want to. So that's what we'll do. We'll use the whole tub of whipped cream because it's going to even out. Because the cool thing about whole cool whip is that it doesn't, it's not as sweet. So it balances out the cake because of the condensed milk. The sweetened condensed milk is going to even it out. So, therefore, um, you are all set so with the three stitches. Then, if you want to be, if you want it to make it look pretty and nice, then you would just use the traditional cherries on top. Or if you want to go festive, you could also put some sprinkles on top as well. So it's up to you. <laughs> right, in my case, since it's a birthday party, I'm going to sprinkle 